welcome to another episode of the Stellar Sun podcast, the only podcast dedicated to astronauts all the while rocking it on all the interdimensional space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Giedra, and today I'm joined by Silo Aria. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at stellarsoundpodcast.com, on all social platforms at Stellar Sound Podcast, or join our, our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Podcast community Discord server. Links are in the description. So today we'll be talking with a singer, music producer, the founder of the music production for women, Silo Aria. Hi, Silo. Welcome to our podcast. How are you? Hello. I'm doing very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's lovely to be here. Yeah, it's very lovely to have you here. I think we're very excited. We we're very excited about this episode. Right. <laughs> um, so first, maybe let's go a little bit into your uh, music journey. I know that you mentioned in other podcasts that you started singing because your grandma took you to singing lessons. Uh, so maybe you can tell a little, a little bit about that. Like, what were the lessons like, and how did she decide to take you there? Sure, sure. Yes. Um, so she, it, it wasn't actually she took me to uh, singing lessons, but she was a, a singer herself. So she kind of um, taught me. Uh, bit of Indian, uh, traditional Indian Carnatic music. So it was something that I picked up with her and we were probably at that time the two most people into music in, in our family. So I think there's a bit of a bond um, between us because of that. So so yeah, that's kind of where it started, <laughs> started for me. But then I, um, from there, I eventually I got into it western music and then started writing uh, my own music around the age of 12 and then um was working with a bunch of other producers to produce my music and uh and that kind of eventually didn't exactly turn out the way i wanted it to which was quite frustrating um but then that eventually brought me to producing my own music and um uh, and yeah, it, it was just so freeing to be able to do that myself. And then I was thinking, why did it take me so long to get into this? And uh, and thinking about what would have made the journey easier. And eventually I started uh, MPW because um, I just put everything into that that would have helped me in the hope that it would help other female you know, artists get into production. Uh -huh. And... I was just also wondering when you already started like doing music more professionally, um, how did your family react to it? Like, was your grandma also supportive? Like, were your parents supportive? Yeah, I mean, I did the things that they wanted me to do. Like, I did a degree. Uh, I in business, I ended up becoming a chartered accountant. I worked for um, a corporate uh, field for a while, so. Eventually, I think they could see that that was not making me too happy. So, um, so they didn't mind when I made that shift in careers because, you know, I think for the most part, parents do want their kids to, to be happy. And when they see that that's not the case, then, um, then they, they're okay with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing that they were supportive. I think it's also way easier than to to do something that's maybe not something that they expected at first, but um, it's way more difficult when you feel like they don't want you to do it. Again. Yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes um, like just realizing where that's coming from and like knowing that for me anyway, you know, it was coming from a place of love. Like they didn't want to see me struggle and they didn't want to see um, me go through a really uh, uncertain lifestyle um so you know i understand that from uh from their perspective yeah um, and it wasn't uh, wasn't because they were trying to kind of shut it down for, for no reason yeah yeah of course uh, i mean usually the parents want what's the best for us i guess yeah, and, yeah. Exactly. um and you also mentioned that uh while you're working with a lot of producers like there were very uncomfortable situations that you encountered uh do you mind sharing any examples or like sharing what was the most frustrating thing while working yeah with mostly male producers um i 
Yeah, to be honest, I, I, I don't know if I do want to share the examples, but um, okay. they're just situations often that um, can leave you feel feeling quite uncomfortable um, and like the power dynamic seems to be very skewed and you feel like you just need to allow yourself to be treated in a certain way um, and, uh, and and put up with that because there's no other option. There's no other way to get your music out there because you have to have a producer and if unfortunately the, the situations you're having are, are not very positive then um, you yeah th- there's no way around it or well, that's how it felt for me um, anyway because uh, uh, yeah because I didn't see uh, any any other options um, so unfortunately I, I hear about this all the time as well and uh, now running MPW and sometimes I think when you're in these situations you can sort of make it feel like it's your own fault or like maybe I said something that wasn't okay that kind of led to the situation or something like that but now I've realized there's no uh it's not our fault <laughs> that uh, certain things happen and like you know one little uh, example was just yeah in one collaboration just being called like babe all the time and like that was just really mm. frustrating it's like uh, I have a name and I would like that to be used and and when I kind of said that in a in a nice uh, way I just never heard back from that person again so like it's just um yeah these kind of situations are really frustrating but uh I, I don't know I don't deal with them anymore so maybe people know that I just won't stand for it now you decided to start producing on your own uh, and I imagine that there were like a lot of sources a lot of places that you could possibly go to where you could start so I'm just wondering like what were the first steps where you looked for information where you learned everything not everything but where you started (laughs) learning music production yeah, so um, I guess I feel like like most people, you end up on YouTube and you start looking at videos and, and all of that stuff. And um, so that's kind of where it started, I guess. And there were a few really lovely friends that um, that also helped me along the way, which I really appreciated. Um, but what I feel like I was struggling to find was a sense of community and when I went to a a lot of different music producer sort of forums and that kind of thing um I I ended up feeling a little bit like the odd person out all the time which kind of stops me from seeking those groups and then ended up just trying to learn myself um so uh yeah and at the time I was working full-time so it didn't make sense for me to join like a tertiary um education program or or anything like that so uh for the most part it was self-taught with uh with the help of a few friends yeah it's very nice that they helped you yeah and maybe also something similar because i think in other podcasts where you also talked about your journey you said that like it was quite difficult because you didn't really have any role models with women um, so I was wondering whether were there any other women that you looked up to or not necessarily women and it doesn't have to be in music industry but like some role models that you had at the time yeah so um, there weren't really female role models in the music industry around production that I found at the time uh, I don't know maybe I wasn't working hard enough um, but uh for me, I would say the female role models that have had the biggest impact in my life have probably been um, the women in my family and just kind of seeing how they have gone about um, supporting our family, especially uh, you know, with my grandmother, for example, like they grew up in a, well, she brought up a family in a house of, one room and the whole house was one room and just kind of managing that and then uh my mum was 
uh, obviously looking after us during the uh, a move from uh, from India to here. So there were lots of different things to navigate there and to build a life here. So yeah, so I would say I'm, I'm very grateful for the women in my family to have been role models for me. The question is. Like, have you ever thought about becoming a producer instead of teaching? And why did you chose to teach others instead of becoming a music producer yourself? Well, firstly, to be honest, it's not a huge interest of mine to produce for others. Um, yeah, and there are producers, obviously, that, that focus on that and their bread and butter is production and is working with other artists but for me producing for myself is what gave me so much joy and to be able to do that and um that joy and that freedom that I got when I started producing for myself was what I wanted to share with others rather than helping other female artists by producing their music uh which wasn't you know, something that really, really excited me to do. But um, to see women feel empowered and to be able to gain the skills to do it themselves and then express their art exactly how they want to um, want it to be heard, that is what really, um, really excited me and was something that I wanted to share. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and you work, I guess, a lot with women empowerment, and that's like the theme that's coming up over and over again. Uh, so how do you understand it, and why is it so important to you to empower other women? I think if you feel like there's something that has benefited you as a woman, and you feel like it would benefit other women, then uh, then yeah, if you can share it, that's great. But that's not to say everyone should and you have to always be kind of helping others and, and all of that. For mm-hmm. some people, that's in their path to um, to to share the knowledge and all of that. But um, if if we can and and it uh, it's something that we're in a position to be able to do, then I think it's great because the more we can help each other, then we can just expand our footprint in the music industry and support each other to um to improve the state that we're in currently and and make it better for future generations as well yeah definitely Uh, so maybe going a little bit back to teaching i know that you also like give workshops and you also give workshops in schools for example um and i imagine they're not like it's not like a course it's quite short and you have quite a little time, limited time. So how do you yeah. plan for those? How do you prepare for those? And what do those workshops look like? Like, how do you get people motivated in such a short time? Yeah, I actually love doing these like really small taster sessions. And it's so fun. And we have a structure that we follow now that seems to work well and um Often we will find a popular song and do a breakdown of that song. And uh, in the process, we'll also teach people how to um, how to navigate a production software. What are they looking at when they open it? And uh, and they're learning the skills as they are putting together this track that sounds like something that is familiar to them and that they've heard before. So I think immediately that gets people excited when you're seeing something created from scratch that sounds like something they are familiar with and and like for the most part. Um, So so yeah, that's kind of usually how we structure it. And, um, And I think we get a good mix of very beginner skills in there but also there are little, little slightly more advanced things so that if there are some people that have been producing for a little while longer, they can also take something away from that session as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds amazing. I can imagine just like if if it's if you're someone who has never done music production, and then you just see how easily you can kind of build up a simple track. Um, yeah, I feel like that the feeling that oh, I can do it too can be very very strong. Exactly. Exactly. And we have had some people that don't didn't have an interest in production at all that have come to these sessions and thought oh my gosh that's so cool and i'd love to be able to do that so so that's great yeah i can imagine um yeah so what are the things that you like the most and the least about teaching others uh what i like the most is seeing the transition in not only their skill but mostly their mindset uh from the start to the end and a big part of what we do now is our one year master music program and i remember the meeting that we had because we always meet all of our potential students one to one before they sign up to the program to make sure it's the right fit for them and i remember meeting a few people then and their demeanor at that time it was quite um some people were in in a tough tough position in their life or um feeling a bit lacking in confidence with their skills and weren't sure exactly where they were going but then a year later seeing them actually kind of getting to the goals that they've set for themselves um going on tours and and being able to um to produce exactly what they want to and and seeing their confidence like grow so much in that process is the best best thing um so that's definitely what i love most uh what i love least probably is um uh, the fact that right now i'm located in australia so and and all of our students are well a good portion of our students are in the UK and Europe so all of our sessions are tailored for that time which means very early mornings for me so they the sessions are usually at 5 a.m. so I'm usually a bit tired <laughs> but that's not really the worst thing it's fine in addition to music production for women i know that you also did a short documentary with LNA that we already had on our podcast before and you also create a podcast uh, so how do these things combine together with the MPW and did they change your perspective on the music production or music industry in general well the partnership with uh, Elena and she she's now one of my closest friends i would say so it's it was really crazy and amazing about how that came about but she reached out to me on Instagram saying that she wanted to do this documentary uh as you probably know she's a pretty kind of high energy person and I was a little bit like whoa like who is this person um but yeah it was just so so great and such a pleasure to work with her and and it came about quite easily actually um the whole project um and it was really really enjoyable to do so that was fun and it was great to have some support from a few uh, different partners in putting that together so actually the experience that i'm having in the industry since starting MPW is quite a positive one like a lot of people seem to want to help and to uh to bring awareness to the issues as well so it's been actually quite lovely and running the podcast is just such a pleasure and and as I'm sure you can relate as well like every week or two weeks ours is every two weeks um you get to to chat to someone new and and hear their interesting stories and it's it's so fun <laughs> so i i really enjoy that and it's it's helped me to connect with people in so many different parts of the industry that I think I wouldn't have spoken to otherwise. Yeah, definitely. Um and is there anyone that you would love to have on your podcast that you haven't yet like you're kind of if you could have anyone um who would you invite? Oh. Well, I would love to have FKH Reads on my podcast. 
She was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good choice. Yeah, she's very cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Teach quite a lot of women, and not only women, women of course, but you bring quite many new people, new producers into this industry, into the world. Um, so I'm just curious how, what is your take on competitiveness? And like, aren't you afraid that, you know, a little bit maybe afraid that someone will be better than you or like it will be a bit more competitive or it will be more difficult to kind of take apart, be a part of the music industry? As a producer or as, as someone a producer. who runs MPW? Well, I don't know. That's not a very concern of mine, to be honest. I I think as soon as we start looking at any industry in that way of like a win for you means a loss for me, it's um, it kind of shuts communication mm. and sharing of knowledge and everything so uh the industry is competitive enough as it is like um and and i think if we can stop the impact on that uh by not getting involved more in the competitiveness than we need to then I think it's probably good for our own mental health. Um, so, so yeah. So I think just celebrating the wins for other people and just putting our head down and just working on our own music without worrying about what's going on around us too much is probably how I would approach it. I think, yeah, I really love your take on this. I really love your perspective. Um, I think it also goes very well in hand with empowering others and it doesn't mean that when mm -hmm. you empower others you kind of have to, you know, it doesn't change your position basically, like you can still go and you can still do a lot with together with others. Yeah, definitely. And like if you help someone and then they do something really great, like you're definitely going to be left in a in a good light with, with that person. And then if things are going well, maybe they'll pull you along for the ride. You know, they don't have to, but um, I think it's a better thing than not sharing that mm -hmm. information just in case they take it and run away with it. Um, yeah, so just, just trying to be helpful actually creates a lot of bridges between people, which, which can only be a good thing. That is amazing. And um, did your experience with MPW also change your kind of perspective on the whole industry? I mean, in the way like you, you know, you said before that before you started producing, you were working with a lot of male producers and it was quite frustrating. So I'm just wondering whether it changed your perspective on that. And if you would go back to that time again now, would you do anything differently? Yeah, so it's definitely changed my perspective in that I know that I'm not alone in those situations and they unfortunately happen way too often and um, and I don't know why but it, I think it would have helped me to know that it's not just me and it happens a lot. Um, so I think that's, that's one thing which would have changed my perspective on maybe blaming myself for certain situations um and as far as how i would go about it now honestly i, I just wouldn't uh engage with people that make me feel uncomfortable i think and i, I was speaking about this a little bit earlier with um with someone about how as your confidence grows, these situations just don't seem to arise anymore. So I think um, now I would follow my gut a bit more than I did before. Like before I would just think, oh, I should just, you know, deal with this situation and, and not make a fuss about it because this person can help. 
uh, bring about some contacts or whatever that situation was or they can help open some doors for me even though it, it felt not good like it didn't feel like a good gut feel working with this person and it never never ended up well so I think now I would just go with that gut and if it doesn't feel right if it doesn't feel like a good good fit uh, and I feel like I'm not tre- being treated well I would just leave straight away like I just don't have time for that anymore like there are now especially running MPW as well running this podcast as well like there are great people in the industry so why would you waste time on people that don't make you feel good or make you feel small or whatever Mm -hmm. that happens to be and you just mentioned confidence and like that confidence really helps with it so do you have any advice for people on how to get more confidence or like how did you get it how did you manage to to become more confident yeah well i was a bit um I, I kind of was uh what's the word i'm looking for not proactive but kind of uh proactive about building that because i realized especially if i want to be running a business and all of that i i need to be more confident and be able to um just kind of stand my ground so i tried to look for situations that made me feel a bit scared to uh to do like like going to networking events and talking to new people or cold emailing people that i admire and wanted to speak to or all of that like things that when i thought about doing them it it, it immediately scared me a little bit so i kind of looked for that feeling and tried to do those things um more and more so that every time you're in that place where you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable and the more you do those things, they're not uncomfortable anymore because you've done them 10 times already. So then you keep increasing your comfort zone to include more and more things that you weren't comfortable with um, a little while ago. So that I think really helped me. And, um, And yeah, I remember the first time I was running a session for MPW of like 10 people in the room or something. And I was pr- pretty scared about that. But then, yeah, the last one we did, um, uh, which was a live event, I think had almost 200 people in the room and that was totally fine. So um, it just, yeah, it just goes slowly. Um, if you And you can do that quite consciously, I think. Yeah, that that is amazing. Um, and I know that in another podcast, like going a bit more into your music, you mentioned that you chose to work with Ableton Live because of the live aspect. Um, and you just also mentioned like speaking in front of the yeah. audiences. So do you think that having like that experience of performing live helped you a bit on also speaking in front of the in front of the people? hundred percent yeah 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 like and as musicians maybe it feels like we should all be comfortable with this and 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 going up and performing in front of people but i actually recently last weekend performed after a long long time um since covid and everything and honestly i was more scared <laughs> to do that than than talk in front of a, a, you know a much bigger room or, or whatever. But again, I I felt that apprehension on of being on stage again, and I was like, right, well, I have to do this because um, it's making me uncomfortable, which means it'll it'll help me um, down the line. But definitely, I think there's nothing more scary really than performing your own original music that is your heart and soul and and sharing that with a with a live audience and and it's so beautiful as well at the same time but it, it really is putting yourself out there so after that like speaking to an audience is easy <laughs> so yeah i think definitely that that has helped me and yeah you mentioned the concert and uh, that you recently had i think it was like three days ago maybe from from today um 
So yeah. maybe one of my questions was, since you mentioned that you like performing live, what happened that you haven't performed for so long since COVID? Um, and do you plan to perform more now? Yeah. Well, yeah. Good, good questions, I, I guess. And I wonder if this happened with other musicians, but during COVID, obviously there was a big chunk of time where we couldn't perform live. And before that, I had done a few shows in London that weren't too far apart. So I was kind of in the rhythm of it. But then this whole chunk of time goes by and then I forgot how to play my whole set pretty much. So then, yeah, then all this fear starts coming back and you haven't done it for a long time. And um, and then you're like, oh, can I still sing? Like, is, is that possible? <laughs> and, uh, and then... And then, yeah, like preparing for this show took me a long, long time. Like, um, and lots of practice and, and kind of vocal exercises and stuff, like way more than I've prepared for any other show, in, in fact, I think. Um, because I, it had been a long time and, and I think there was, uh, there was a lot of fear just because it had been a while and then I had to learn everything again and that stuff. So I don't know if other artists had a, a similar experience, but um, that was that was mine anyway. But yes, after this was done, I was thinking like it, it would be really fun to do to do more of these. So hopefully I, I will kind of keep an eye out for more opportunities. Yeah, I fun. hope so. I, I really wish that for you. That you know, have more opportunities to do that because I can't imagine it's like it's a very different experience than just producing at home and then releasing it on, like on YouTube and Spotify. And when you create your own music, uh, what does your creation process look like shortly? And then also, is there anything that is really frustrating or like some things that that you get stuck at sometimes? Yeah. Well, the process, I guess, is different every time. Like, I don't think there's a set process that I usually follow, but um, sometimes I might start with, I might already have a vocal melody and lyric written down, and then I might start start with that. Um, and something that I find fun to do is to have some sort of a drum beat and then just improvise with vocals uh, over that and just kind of keep singing over and over it and seeing what sounds good and turning little sections into verses or choruses or something like that. And um, for me, my voice is my main instrument, so I guess is what I'm most comfortable with. So I like using that to come up with ideas. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so so it's it is a bit of a different process every time, and what is frustrating sometimes is, and I, I think I'm trying to work around this a little bit is when you sit down to make some music, especially when there's a lot going on. Like um, I think managing time for me is. I'm, I'm getting better at it, but it's definitely a challenge around running MPW and everything else that's going on to find time for making music. And then you, you have this time and you've sat down and nothing's really coming out the way you want it to, um, which can be uh, frustrating. But I think how I'm trying to work around that now is just give myself some time in the calendar to work on music and have no... Um, no pressure at the end of that for it to be, you know, I have to have a song after it or something like that. But just saying I've kind of won the day or something if I just sit down for that period to make something. Um, because uh, if you have enough of those sessions where you're actually sitting down to make something, eventually something will, will come out of it. Um, but what we don't want and what I have, kind of in previous years done is had 
this experience where nothing's come out and then it's left me feeling so frustrated that it takes me a long time to step back down to actually mm. make something. So um, that's the challenge and my potential way around that. I'll come back a little bit to that uh, later, but I was also wondering because some of the some of the songs you have made videos for, like video clips, um, and I was wondering just how do you create those and it's, is it your ideas or do you leave every creative decision to the directors? Uh, to be honest, I most of it is not my idea. So um, I wouldn't say I'm the most visual person in the world. So uh, I've struggled to find video concepts for my songs. I actually love when the director has an idea and usually I'm pretty happy to roll with that. Often I've had some feedback on the edit, um, but as far as the concept, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for the director to come up with ideas. And I noticed as well that um, in, I think in all of your videos, there's some kind of dancing at least, like body movement. Uh, and is this like a theme that comes up okay. consciously or is it kind of just naturally came to be, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it's not conscious. Um, I didn't realize it until you mentioned it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, it's, I guess it just, it's happened naturally. Okay, and then for the last, uh, last few questions, I want to talk a bit about your song, Hover. I think that's also the last song you released, at least on YouTube and I think on Spotify as well. Um, so, yeah. what is it about? Yes. Oh, so Hover is about uh, when you maybe, well, when you're in a relationship and you give so much to that person that it's actually taking away from you and it's kind of like a one-sided thing and um, uh, yeah and, and I think I realized after this particular situation that it's just not healthy to be in that situation like it's not that you always give 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 to try and help someone else um, and that's never going to work long term because you need to also feel your own energy and a relationship should be you know roughly 50 50 where um you're giving but also you're you're getting something in return where your energy is being filled as well but i found myself quite depleted um time and time again in that uh, in that situation so that's what that song is and you already mentioned like improvising on on some kind of beat that you have so was this the same did you also add the beat because i think the beat is something that is very common for all of your songs like it's very prominent it's very a big part of your songs so how did you create it for this song and also was it like the same process that you had the beat and you improvised or was it something different there was actually um a sample on splice that i found which is the saxophone sort of sample which is kind of characteristic throughout the the song and that really drove everything in the song for me like the melody and everything around that so there was a lot of use of um samples and loops in that song which i hadn't used that much up to that point but i really really enjoyed that actually so the, the drum beat as well was kind of a combination of loops and cut up loops and, and my own um, production on top of that as well so um so yeah that's kind of how that came about and I uh, it, it's kind of strange because I don't really have a drumming background or anything but I do really enjoy working with percussion as well and it's um it's fun it, it brings such a different energy to definitely the yeah and I think that that might have been one of the reasons why a lot of your dance videos also have like dancing because 
like <laughs> when I'm listening to your <laughs> music, it's also like you want to move. Like the beat gives you that that feeling where you kind of you want to move your body at least a bit. Maybe not a lot. Maybe not like do a whole contemporary dance, but just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> If you are a woman in music, um, just to just to back yourself really, and um, and to find a community to help to support you, but just to just get out there and, and you know that stat of this women that they have to have like 90% of the resume ticked before they go for something whereas it's very different with men so just I think fake it to you and make it a little bit but just put yourself out there and and especially with this industry like no one's going to fight for you if you're not doing it yourself so Um, That's a very <laughs> great uh, yeah. kind of line to finish, I think. Um, yeah, so oh, good. <laughs> I guess for the end, I just want to thank you for joining me at the Stellar Sound podcast today. And also before we go, I want to give you a chance to like shout out to any platforms or projects if you want to. Sure, sure. Firstly, thank you so much. It's been such a lovely, lovely chat and, and I'm so glad to be on this podcast as well. And uh, as far as any uh, any shout outs, I mean, if anyone is interested in learning to produce music and wants some support in that, please, please go to musicproductionforwomen.com and reach out to us and you can book like a little chat with me if you want to. We have some free downloads, which would be really helpful for you if you're not sure where to start. Um, but yeah, do reach out and if it can help you, then we'd absolutely love Okay, you. so I hope, I hope that it will bring you a few new students or at least a few people who will be inspired to learn <laughs> more about music production. And for all our listeners, yeah, yeah <laughs> remember to follow us in the Stellar Sound Discord community or head over to our social media platforms. And we want to thank you for joining us here today at the Stellar Sound podcast. But the countdown has begun and it's time to blast off into the stellar sphere. So just remember to empower creative musicians everywhere and we'll meet you again in our next episode.